Continuing the talks on the songs of Nanak, Karta Puruk, Attributes of Ek Omkar Part 2 After Nanak emerged from the river, Ek Omkar Satnam was his message and this is the Mool Mantra that forms the beginning of Guru Bani, the Sikh scripture. The first part is invocation Ek Omkar Satnam that which is is one omkar saru is nature is uncreated and also it is true i had spoken earlier on the meaning of the word karta puru karta puru means the only doer only doer means just as electricity the electric current the electrical energy is at the helm of all the electrical appliances each electric appliance is made differently to manifest one or two qualities of electric current basically it is one quality however there are different different presentations of that energy and when you understand this and this becomes a part of your awareness then you will realize that when two people are talking to one another or they are interacting it is the same divine energy the same doer that is operating through different body mind and intellect realms just as each appliance has its own body mind intellect understanding and way of operation so to each individual is unique just as electric stove is unique your laptop is unique your AC is unique so to each individual is unique because it has been created to manifest the quality of the just as each electrical appliance is made specifically to manifest a particular quality of electric current so too is the case with each individual but the difference between electrical appliance and individual is electric appliance is fixed to work in a particular way your stove is fixed to work to bring one quality of the electric current it manifests only one quality of the electric current that it generates heat and with that heat it becomes useful to cook food in case of individual there is a possibility the possibility is in the seed form the individual has the capability to materialize it or allow it to remain unused and also there is a possibility for expansion of the consciousness of an individual which is not possible in case of an electric appliance then the second attribute is fearless or nirbhav each word that adorns the mool mantra is soaked in the fragrance of nanak the f each word reflects the consciousness of totality that nanak is now to nanak he or that which is is for ever fearless why does fear come in individual fear is the outcome of the other the other is hell this is an important statement of western philosopher sartre and this is your experience as well many times you want to be alone and then the company of the friend is a solace and that of the enemy is misery it is said that the other is hell so what is the fear fear is of losing the fear is that someone may break the security cordon fear of death fears of sickness all plague your life these all represent the other how can you escape the other you are sitting on the mountain or under a tree a bird may come and release itself on you rain may come 
Sun may bother you. Where would you run to? The other is all around. All of a sudden, rain comes and you have no umbrella. Or the weather is rainy. You are afraid that the rain may come and you may fall sick. Your vision is of the other. You have not envisioned the oneness in diversity and multiplicity. If you allow the raindrops to fall on you and you enjoy the dance of the raindrops or the dance of the sun, then the fear of the other will not be there. The only way to get rid of this menace of the other is to search which is at the base and the cause of the entire existence. When you are at the helm of affairs of all the things that surround your home, there is no fear. Fear is always because of the other. But when there is only one energy is at play behind everything, behind the raindrops, behind the sun rays, behind everything. And this is an awareness that there is only one karta puruk, one doer. When there is one doer, then how can there be fear? The problem arises when you continue to say that the problem is because of the other. The each spouse considers the other to be the cause of the problems in his or her life. No one takes the blames or the responsibility of his are her own problems. The moment you reach to the core of existence, you realize that there is only one doer. You have reached to the core of the existence and attained to inner oneness. The other is no more. No fear, no sickness, no death. Nothing can remain as disharmony. Sickness brings disharmony. Failure brings disharmony. And this disharmony creates fear in you. Nanak chants Ekonkar Sapna. If you have really chanted this Mool Mantra Ekonkar Sapna, then automatically fearlessness will born in you and you cannot remain afraid of the other. As long as there is fear of the other, sickness, death or anything else, you have not really understood the message of Nana. You may have been chanting like a parrot repetition. You may be chanting correctly like the CD continues to play the same thing over and over again until its life, but it does not understand anything. You are like that CD player or the parrot that continues to repeat the word but does not understand. And transformation happens only when the understanding dawns. And understanding is awareness. When this is your experience, when this is engraved on the inner sky of your consciousness, when God is all around, when God surrounds you, fear vanishes because there is no one except God. Nothing else exists. This brings fearlessness. Also with fear disappears jealousy and the enemy. The jealousy is because of the other. You consider the other man, the other woman as other, not the manifestation of the same electric current, same karta puruk, same doer. This is the state of nirvav, and nirvav means 
fearless without any prejudice you have to be nirbhav fearless first then the second next attribute that comes is nirbhav 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 means one who is without any enmity without any prejudice without any prejudgment that is nir means without bhav means enmity or prejudice nirbhav bhav means bhay bhay means fear nir means without and bhay this is how it is pronounced in gurmukhi language nirbhav hindi word is nirbhay nirbhay means fearless nirbhay means without any prejudice it is the offspring of ek omkar sat naam that understanding that dawns in you that there is only oneness one god one karta puruk that is at the helm of affairs of everything that is the guiding principle behind each and every one of us you and i my body mind and intellect realm is trained designed developed to manifest certain attributes of the unknown and unknowable then the next attribute that comes akal murati a means no kal means time that which is not conditioned by time murat means image the image is beyond time means that is not affected by time and space try to understand this what does time refer to time refers to change change alone gives you taste and experience of time if nothing changes you will not know time you are aware of time only because the seconds hand continues to move everything keeps on changing sun rises at the dawn although it is illusion but it appears to be noon comes and gives way to the evening and the night baby is born baby gives way to the child child grows young young becomes old healthy becomes sick sick gets better rich becomes poor poor gets rich rich gets bankrupt this is all change change is the way of life the river of time continues to flow time is a phenomenon of change time means the distance or the gap between the two changes i have spoken a word now there is a gap this is the measure of change the river of time continues to flow time is a phenomenon of change time means the distance of gap between two changes the change between dawn and evening is the measure of time just imagine one morning you get up and nothing changes the movement of sun is stationary there is no change in your age the hands of the clock are stationary leaves do not turn yellow everything becomes still how would you know of time then how would you know of time then time is a phenomena of finiteness the earth the gravitational force time is a phenomena of the force that pulls you down gravitational force pulls you towards your base the earth the moment meditation begins in your life you transcend the gravitational force then there is the force another force that is known as grace now when you enter into space means space is a phenomena where the gravitational pull of the earth does not move there is the earth's atmosphere and beyond that is the space so too when you enter into meditativeness 
you enter into your inner space where time becomes non-functional. So when you enter into a space beyond the gravitational force of the earth, now in order to enter into the realm of space, you have to generate so much of energy in you that the gravitational force of earth is nullified and you are plunged into the space. You are shot into the space. That is what you would have seen when a plane take, is beginning to take off. What it is doing? It continues to move from its taxiing place, continues to move on the surface of the earth. When it is about to take the flight, take the movement upward, it pauses for a while, accelerates. And in acceleration, what happens? Tremendous energy is generated. And that energy nullifies the effect of the gravitational force and helps it to move into the space. This you cannot do with your car. Your car is moving on the surface of the earth. So it does not need that kind of... Those people who are taking the the car jump or things like that, what they do? They start the car, drive it, pause it at a particular place, accelerate it, generate tremendous energy, release the brake and all of a sudden the car jumps. That is what we call in the movies as a stunt. There is a technique of that. So when the plane reaches the point from where it has to take off, it pauses, generates tremendous energy and all of a sudden begins to shoot into the air. It leaves the surface of the earth and goes in the space. But this is earth's space. It is bound by the gravitational force. But when you reach the threshold where Earth's gravitational force is leaving and you have to enter into, this is like the door. When you are standing at the threshold of the door, one step backward will take you in, one step forward will take you out. The same way when you reach to that point, this is called a state of limbo. The two forces pull you. The outside attraction pulls you and inside attraction pulls you. So the two forces nullify one another. That is the point when the seeker reaches, when the attraction of the world and the attraction of the inner neutralize one another. If the force energy field of the inner is more, you will enter into the inner realm. If the energy field of the outer is more, it will remain, you will remain with outward. Your consciousness will remain outward, always moving outward. When the two balance one another, then you will remain neither in nor out. So you have to generate tremendous energy, courage, determination, as an individual, you have to determine, have tremendous determination, courage and energy to change the direction of your energy from outward to inward. You are, and then when you begin to move inwards, there will be no change. You are aware of time because you are surrounded by change. For God, there is no change. He is eternal or what Hindus call as changeless. Change is the experience of blindness. Change means your inability to experience the reality. When you experience that which is change and all that ephemeral is no more, time is a measure of change. Nanak says, Ek Omkar Satnam 
करता पुरुख निर्भव निर्भय अकाल मूरत आजूनी सैभम गुरु परसा द नेक्स्ट वर्ड एज द एट्रीब्यूट ऑफ ए ओंकार इज अजूनी सैभम अजूनी सैभम मीन्स वन दैट इज बोर्न आउट ऑफ योर ओन फ्री विल यू मे इन्वाइट मी टू योर होम बट इट इज माई चॉइस टू कम और नॉट टू कम नानक सेज ही इज बोर्न आउट ऑफ हिज ओन फ्री विल गॉड हैज नो पेरेंट्स दैट हु इज बोर्न आउट ऑफ यूजल मेल फीमेल रिलेशन विल सर्टनली एंटर द रेलम ऑफ चेंज दैट विच इज बोर्न आउट ऑफ मेल फीमेल रिलेशन विल सर्टनली एंटर ऑफ दिच एंटर द रेलम ऑफ चेंज body comes into existence because of male female relationship interaction between woman and woman is sperm it must decay that is why all the incarnations they assume the birth they have a body because without the body you will not know me suppose if i become bodiless today would you recognize my presence do you feel the energy of the master sometimes you may get a strong vibrations emotional vibes but that is rare you do not feel the presence of the master every moment how can you feel the presence of that which is unborn god every moment so when this unborn unmanifest existential energy that you call god assumes the human form only then we can relate to one another but then once it has assumed the human form it has assumed the body it must decay body comes into existence because of male female relationship and that which enters the body is unborn eternal and beyond change human body is formed by the interaction between two bodies as a sperm and ovum nanak says for god nothing changes comes into existence out of his own free will akal murat means beyond time and space ajuni sabhang born out of his own free will creates its own maya the illusionary effects and enters into the body form within each body nanak says enters that which always is and the moment it leaves the body the aliveness disappears nanak says that akal purush akal puruk is in each one of you that the solitary doer whose nature is beyond time and space born out of its own free will which we call as soul which we call as a spirit which we call as consciousness nana calls that akal purukh is within each one of you however your experience is only of that who is transient you have not established any connection between with that akal purukh with that energy the the unfathomable energy your experience is only of that who is transient seek eternal seek immutable seek that which is beyond time and space and how can you seek this through meditating be mindful of every moment everything is happening when someone says words to you that seems to be unpleasant something hurts you remember the same time ek omkar satnam there is only one doer do you get upset when your left hand does something which upsets the right hand no it does not happen the left hand does not feel upset with the doing of the right hand because unconsciously there is an understanding that left and right hand are part of the same existence same reality is part of me the me is standing between the left and the right hand 
but the same me does not exist between two of your offsprings, two of your children. But the moment you realize that this me, this unborn eternal Akal Puruk, the solitary doer beyond time and space, born out of its own free will, exists between you and your husband, between you and your enemy, because both you and your enemy, you and your spouse, you and your husband are operating on the same principle that is solitary, doer, unborn, eternal, then you are religious for the first time. Then you can allow the other to express itself. The electric stove does not have any conflict, fear or anything of that nature with or competition with television set. Is there competition between the two? But between you and your spouse, between you and your other employee in the office, there is a competition who is more competent. This is ignorance. I recall one of the Indian Bollywood actor. His name is Shah Rukh Khan. When he entered into Bollywood arena, someone asked him that, do you think you can enter the Bollywood arena and compete with other actors? He said, no, I am not here to compete with anyone. I am here to compete with myself today and tomorrow. I am today different. In one movie I have acted this way. In one situation I have acted this way. My competition is with me that I will act in another situation better than this. When the conflict arises between you and your friend, you have acted one way. When the similar situation comes, if you understand the competition with yourself, then you will try to act in a more sublime manner than that you have done in the past. His sentence that I am not here to compete with anyone, instead my competition is with me alone. That means my each performance has to be better and better with deeper understanding when this becomes part of you then you have understood the eternal you have really sought the eternal the immutable that which is beyond time and space you are religious you are the Sikh of Nanak not by chanting Ekonkar Satna not by growing the hair, putting on the turban, putting on the, the insignia of the Sikh religion. That way you do not become a Sikh of Nanak. You become Sikh of Nanak with an understanding. Seek that which is beyond time and space. Body is only the outer covering. With your consciousness you cannot understand the message of Nanak. You have to seek eternal, changeless within first. Experience that first. Then you have understood the message of Nana. If you had ever sit with eyes closed to meditate, you will certainly come to realize that deep within there is no age or time. Deep within you will never know if you are 30 or 40 or 50 years meditate and you will experience the changeless that which is changeless within that which enters the body Khalil Gibran in the Prophet speaks through the master Al Mustafa to the seeker Al Mitra children are born through you not from you you are born through your parents parents have the mechanism for the creation of your body. However, parents have not given you the birth because you are not the body. 
that comes through the interaction of the male female principle you are the changeless the formless the eternal that enters the body that gives the energy the life force to the body and who is that i is the same that nana calls akal puruk ajuni sabham that is the spirit the soul you are born through your parents parents have the mechanism for the creation of your body however parents have not given you the birth that which enters the body certainly comes from the beyond the day you will experience the changeless within you will understand nana and also you will know god is ajuni sabham born out of his own free will god is totally beyond which there is nothing is causeless self sufficient eternal and yet still no name can encompass the magnanimity that day alone you will be free from all anxiety and misery what is human agony nothing in this world can exist without a base and this base can be snatched and taken away from you this is the cause of your worry today you are rich because you have wealth you are rich not because of and he you are rich because of your wealth wealth is the cause of your richness if the wealth is taken your richness is gone this is the cause of your worry today you are rich because you have wealth your wealth is the basis of your richness this wealth can be taken away from you your happiness is because of someone this can change one day today you are in love with someone and sun never rises and never set without that person things have changed that person does not create any more ripples in you one day someone takes away your wife or your husband your spouse the happiness the base of happiness is taken your happiness is no more a spiritual person is happy because of his own existence he is rich because of his own what can you take away from a nana or a buddha neither can you neither can you give nor take away anything from nana neither can you give nor take anything from nana or a buddha whatever nana is he is because of that eternal that he has experienced within nanak exists because of the eternal that he calls akal murat ajuni sahab this is nanak's understanding and he is giving the methodology so that this becomes your understanding as well such an explanation is not that of a philosopher this is for an aspirant the one on the path of inward journey these are the attributes of god so that you too can experience truth and then with this experience become an embodiment of truth what is the methodology nanak explains and he says the last two words of this mool mantra guru prasad and then he says jap seek seek the grace of master one can attain nanak says only by the grace of the master does this mean one cannot attain on his own by his own efforts this you have to understand nanak again and again emphasizes the need for the master nanak says no one can attain without the grace of the master this you have to understand if god is then why can't i attain on my own why is there need for a master why is there need for a master jidu krishna murti says there is no need for a master this is logical and therefore appeals to the intellect when both i and the master have evolved out of god 
then why is there the need for the master in between? Mind always thinks there is no need for the master. Such is the thinking of ego, mind is ego. And because of your ego you need the master. To drop the ego is as difficult as straightening a dog's tail. Dropping the ego is like dog trying to catch its own tail. The dog goes on spinning in an effort to catch hold of its tail. The more forcefully dog jumps in an effort to catch hold of the tail, with an equal force the tail also jumps. The more forcefully dog jumps in an effort to catch hold of it, the tail, with an equal force the tail also jumps. Even if you are capable of dropping ego on your own, that ego attains to another dimension. It becomes subtle. The same case is with the anger. When you start doing the yoga and this and that exercises, then your ego becomes, your anger becomes more subtle. You are not even aware that you are angry. But the anger remains in an, another dimension. So too. Even if you are capable of dropping ego on your own, then ego attains to another dimension, it becomes subtle. This is even more dangerous than gross. How can this happen? Nana gives a methodology. Do whatever you want to do. However, remember all this is happening because of the grace of the Master. Whatever is happening in your life, is happening because of the grace of the Master. Do whatever you want to do. However, remember all this is happening because of the grace of the Master. The Master is needed. Nanak says so that ego does not become subtle. Ego goes on finding new ways and means to stay on. This is the reason Nanak emphasizes the grace of the Master. Because of the grace of the Master, the ego cannot exist or attain to another dimension. The aspirant will put in his effort, but the thought remains like an undercurrent that all this is happening. This will not allow ego to become subtle. This is why Nanak emphasizes the word grace of the Master, Guru Parsad Jap. Meditate that it is happening because of the Guru Parsad, because of the grace of the Master. Not that he is saying, take your rosary and start chanting Yekongkar Satnam. That will not help you. Had it been the case, Nanak would have said from the very beginning, take your rosary and chant Yekongkar Satnam. But it is end, at the end of the entire Mool Mantra, Yekongkar Satnam which is the most relevant invocation. Ek Omkar Satnam, Ek Omkar Satnam, then in a logical sequence, in a sequence, Ek Omkar Satnam, Karta Kuruk, Nirbhav Nirbhaya, Akal Nurat, Ajuni Saibham, then he comes Guru Parsa. By grace of the Master, by grace of the Master alone can this happen. Remember this ever. Jab here is used to mean remember, meditate over that whatever is happening in your life is happening because of that karta puru. If your electric stove starts giving your shock, it is because there is a malfunctioning. Correct that malfunctioning, the electric current will start manifesting its qualities once again. The aspirant will put in his efforts but thought remains like an undercurrent. This is why Nanak emphasizes the word grace of the Master. Nanak emphasizes again and again that you will do, that all that you do will not help you at all. It is only by the grace of the Master that transforms. This does not mean that no one can attain without the Master. For this to happen, a deep understanding is needed. Just a mere look at ego is enough for its dissolution. This requires the look of an awakened one, the look of a Shiva. A glance at the Kamde, the God of love, 
is enough to burn come they into ashes many times you turn on to those movies you look left and right if anybody watching you continue to watch it sometimes these pops up on your screen you have to have that penetrating vision no your no is final hindu understanding is that master was not needed during the satyug however in kaliyug the need for the master is severe kaliyug means let me take an example of a table the table have four legs and all the four legs are necessary for the table to stand if suppose one leg falls or damages can table stand on its own so satyug means when all the four layers of consciousness are available to you four layers what are the four layers of the consciousness if we draw an x and y a graph on the x y axis x axis then the ordinates are 0 0 where x axis intersects the y axis from that ordinate to the above is the y axis where the attributes are positive and the x axis is to the right where the attributes are positive that is why it is 0 0 when the two the x axis moves to the left of this 0 0 ordinate on the graph paper and the y axis goes below the ordinate 0 0 then both x and y ordinates become negative there are two layers below unconscious and collective unconscious that is negative you are negative so you will interact with all those people who support you who are negative this is collective negativeness the collective unconsciousness then above to there are two the consciousness collective consciousness when you are aware of the influence of the others and you are not even influenced by this these are the four legs when you are form in all these four legs you understand this clearly then the table is standing form this is known as satyug if let us suppose one leg of the table is severed the table cannot stand however if the three legs are placed however if the three legs are placed in a position the table can become a tripod stand you look at the stands of all the video equipments they are tripod their legs are placed in such a position that the three balances then the four are not needed this is another state of consciousness a man can stand on the two feet only if the two feet are strong and when you are standing on the two feet then you can make the walk you can walk but with the three feet suppose imagine a man with three legs how can he move that will be a chaos because you need only two for the movement you don't need three you don't need four this is why man can attain to transformation he can attain to another state and when all the legs suppose if the two legs of the man the four legs of the table the three legs of the tripod stand are severed can they stand can they do anything you need two people to hold the top of the table to make it a table this is the state of kaliyug that hindus with the legs with the legs of the table severed it cannot stand with the feet incapacitated the man cannot do normal function just as feet are necessary for walking consciousness is needed to move in the subtle realm consciousness is the feet in kaliyug 
In the present age, man is unconscious, almost asleep. A child is the satyu, because child is innocent. And the older one gets, he is becoming more and more complex. Child is easy to learn. Child can learn faster, but he knows nothing, but his capacity to know is tremendous. With age, unconsciousness increases. He is almost invincible. You cannot make him learn anything because he is full of ego. He thinks himself to be wise. With age, unconsciousness increases and it is bound to happen. Death is approaching. There is fear and inner trembling too. It is difficult to deal with an old man. He knows nothing. There is no fragrance of inner bliss. He knows nothing and there is no fragrance of the inner bliss. Still he thinks that he knows much. He has collected pebbles along the life's journey. But he thinks, but he thinks that he has accumulated diamonds of knowledge along life's river. This is his experience in life's journey. The awareness of a child is fresh. A child is very close to the source of life. A child is a river that is now beginning to flow from God or its origin. Like a flower, the child has just blossomed. There is freshness and aliveness in a child. The older one is like a fading flower. It is so because the inner harmony has not yet happened. Life is nearing end. This is symbolized by the age of the darkness, the present age. And Nanak says, the need for the master is even more in this age. Nanak says, even with ordinary achievement, your ego attains new dimension. Suppose you are promoted and you become an officer or you have attained some degrees, then you consider yourself to be different, better than anyone else. Nanak says, even with ordinary achievement, your ego attains new dimension. Look at the arrogance of the one who goes to the temple. He considers himself better than the rest. He feels that by going to the religious place, the doors of heaven are open for him. The more unconscious you are, the more important is the need of the master. If there is awareness in you, if there is awareness in you, then the need for the master is less. That is why the enlightened ones have no masters, because they are embodiment of awareness. There is no dark caves in them. Their consciousness is capable, is light itself. It can throw light on anything. You bring any problem to the master, he has solution for all. Where does he have an encyclopedia of solutions? No. The encyclopedia is his awareness, his light that he is. He does not need any more master. If there is awareness in you, then the need for the master is less. And when there is total awareness, the master is not needed. And Buddha is total awareness, he does not need a master. When you are asleep, how can you wake up on your own? Master has to wake you up. And this is what the meditation is. The master wakes you up through the meditation. And even then there is fear that you may turn your side and fall asleep. Nanak says, only by the grace of the master you can attain to this state of awareness. This is solemn truth. Nana continues the explanation of the Mool Mantra. In the next point, Adi Sach, Jugadi Sach, Habi Sach, Nana Hosi Bisar. Adi Sach, it is true in the beginning, it is true in the dissolution. Adi Sach means true in the beginning. Jugadi Sach, Jugadi means dissolution. True in Jugati also. Habi such, Nanak Hosi be such. This alone is truth. 
This alone will ever be truth. Nana continues. Ek Onkar Satna. Only this much for this morning. Thus, the Mool Mantra and its attributes contribute. What I have spoken this morning is much more than has been scripted in the book Ekonkar Satnam, The Heartbeat of Nanak. That is why the talk is more relevant because you are within the energy field of the Master. When the Master is speaking, the nuances and the explanation is more. Ekonkar Satnam.